It's been two years since WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange revealed 250,000 classified State Department cables. You may remember that it caused such an uproar, and then he was accused of sexually assaulting two women in Sweden. He's been under house arrest since then, but Assange gave a rare interview to Rolling Stone contributing editor Michael Hastings, who's also the author of a new book called The Operators. Good morning, Michael. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Super hot new show. I love it. I'm glad Thank I can you. be part of it. Thank let's, you. Let's begin with, with where Julian Assange is. Is he going back to Sweden to face the music? February 1st, is they'll decide whether or not he has to go back to Sweden. Right now, he's in an undisclosed location in uh, the English countryside. They moved him locations. He has an ankle bracelet on. Every day, he has to go... Uh, uh, check in at the police station. So he, he is very isolated and right now. The likelihood is that he will go back or not go back? It's unclear. I think eventually he will probably have to go back to face the uh, allegations uh, against him, uh, though he, he's trying to resist that at this time. Do you believe that what he has done has caused people to lose their lives? Uh, no. I, I think, I think uh, there's been no evidence of that. And I think as a whole, uh, it's been a net positive, whether you look at the Arab Spring, uh, Occupy Wall Street, or, the, or literally over 100,000 stories that the WikiLeaks documents uh, have, have inspired. I'm curious, Michael, about how you got the interview and your impressions of him, because he's been described, none of them good descriptions, a rapist, a sexual deviant, an en enemy combatant, and a CIA agent. Can you uh, well, all of those things? Well, what I said, it, it, you know, um, it took about a month and a half of negotiating with WikiLeaks to, to get the interview. And what I said was, look, you've been demonized uh, very, very uh, intensively in the U.S. press. And I want, I want to give a chance for Julian to be Julian, to allow mm -hmm. him to speak uh, warts, uh, warts and all. And I think if you read it, you see, okay, he is a human being. He has this project. He's a brilliant guy. Mm -hmm. And are there, are there reasons to criticize him? Yes, but on the whole, I think what he's doing for journalism is quite important. And after a month, they said, sure, come on down, we'll talk to you, because how did you even know where to go? <laughs> no, they didn't. They said, uh, we can't... I'm curious about the process, because I hear he's so prickly and so evasive. I'm just curious. Yeah, they wouldn't confirm anything, so finally I said, look, uh, you know, I'm getting uh, Rolling Stones buy me a ticket to go to London tomorrow, man. Uh, so I'm going to show up. Uh, hopefully you'll talk to me. What did you find when you got there? He does not exactly uh, win himself many fans. He's not a sympathetic character. So what was the real Julian like? The real Julian, I, I found him, you know, a very fascinating guy to, to hang out with. The real sympathetic character in this, in, this, in this case is Bradley Manning. And while I was there with Julian, uh, the Bradley Manning pretrial was going on, and he was in close contact with both Manning and Daniel Ellsberg. The, the so what's his relationship? Sorry, John. No, no, go ahead. No, go, don't finish. Just that relationship. I mean, what kind of a relationship is there between Assange and, and Manning at this point? Does he feel that, I mean, I, how does he feel towards him? Oh, I think, I think he's uh, very sympathetic and is, is working uh, in defense of Bradley Manning. And also the key with the Manning trial is that the government is trying to get Manning to flip to testify against Assange uh, to try to create this case that WikiLeaks is an espionage agency, uh, yeah. essentially. Some of the papers that were, were publishing this stuff have come back at, mm -hmm. including, I think, The Guardian, mm -hmm. a prestigious newspaper uh, in England, and also The New York Times. Right. Yes, I, I, mean, I mean, look, the relationship that Assange feels betrayed by both The Guardian and The New York Times. And I think they feel betrayed by Assange. Yes. Yeah, no, it, it's, you know, one of the things, there's this culture clash here. As Julian Assange is a tech geek um, coming from this hacker culture. And he's, and, and, he, and, you know, for this brief moment in time, he had five of the major media organizations in the world working together with right. him to pull off this kind of incredible journalistic coup. And then after the party's over, you know, recriminations happen, um, people get big egos, <laughs> words are said. Uh, Who had the biggest ego? I think uh, having worked in the media business and lived in Washington, <laughs> I think Julian could give some people a run for their money or vice, yeah. or vice versa. Everything you've said so far seems to find no fault with Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a correct uh, a no, impression. no, I think I think uh, I, I have fault with some of the things they did at WikiLeaks in terms of redaction. I think it's an imperfect organization. Explain um, redaction. Re redaction meaning uh, they, on some cases, they failed to to uh, take out some of the, and, the and names. And if you fail to do that, what happens? Uh, it could potentially put someone's life at risk. I would argue, though, that uh, th since there's no evidence of that happening, it was used as as, mm -hmm. a, as sort of a weapon to criticize them. Yeah. And I'm in sure. some cases, just to make one quick point. Okay, in some okay. cases, uh, some of the disclosures helped the United States. It showed, in fact, some diplomatic cables where people were trying to work 
for a positive outcome. And in Tunisia, literally Tunisian activists credited uh, WikiLeaks, the, the information they found mm. in WikiLeaks. So it's, it's this delicate balance. I mean, Secretary of State Clinton talks mm. often about internet freedom and transparency. Now, it's great to talk about it in theory, mm. but when you have the kind of radical expression of that, which is Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, uh, it can be very, uh, very uh, challenging. On another big story you did, Stan McChrystal, any yes. regrets uh, about that story and the consequences that it led to? No, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm proud of that story, uh, in, and in the book, uh, I, I give the full context. Um, did you think he was going to lose his job? No, no You way. did not? No, no. I what mean, did you think would happen? I thought that it would have happened. Every other bit of war reporting I've done is like a drop in the ocean, and uh, the fact that um, what happened did happen was, was very shocking to me. And, and as I think, you know, in, in, the, in the book that I have out, The Operators, it gives the whole wild, uncensored tale. But most readers have come away saying, like, well, McChrystal's a complicated figure, like a MacArthur or a Patton. Um, I know, Charlie, I, I believe you interviewed him at one point following it. I did. And, I did. And, and, and one of the questions that was asked was, if you were uh, President Obama, would you have fired yourself? And his response was several times as, as a joke. Yeah, yeah as and, a joke, exactly. I mean, I, mean, I think he, he, he's a fascinating character, and uh, it's... It's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a tough business, politics, the military, um, but, but we're talking about the longest war America's been in and the people who promote those policies that keep us in these wars need to be scrutinized as, as, as uh, tough would as anyone it, else. Would it have been different if he had not had to resign? I, I th in terms of how the wars played out? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So I, that I, was a continuation of things that he was doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the policy essentially stayed the, right. the same, but I think it, that was a moment where President Obama reclaimed control or began to reclaim mm -hmm. control of the Pentagon. And since then, he has rejected the troop request. Wait, meaning that generals. President Obama had lost control of the Pentagon? Yes, that's what, I, that, that's what happened in the first year of, uh, okay. first year of the, the, his administration. Michael Hastings, you could stay with us. Hour. I know. <laughs> we hope you will come back. The book again is that's the, the point, operators. Isn't it? Thank yes. you. Yes, yes. <laughs>